Okay. We'll start with you for there. Yes, my sister, and then I'll come to you. Thanks. Thank you. I then come to the front row. Thank you very much. I will take Bule. You will be the last person on this side. There's no one this side. I'm going to take a hand, just one hand, and then we'll have, uh, wait for the second round. Yes, have you seen? I'm going to stop right there for now and um, perhaps um, start with uh, Nkulua. Yes. Uh, oh, right. so. Sorry about that. I thought these mics are working. Uh, Siatanda Kappa, it's your name, is it? Siamtanda. Siamtanda Kappa, yes. Thank you very much. Uh, your question is uh, uh, whether this 
these internal processes, selection processes of the ANC uh, are worth the trouble involved if uh, the list still contains names of people who uh, are facing certain allegations or certain allegations are leveled against them. Uh, yes, indeed, it is a worthy exercise. Uh, it was a very rewarding exercise in the sense that uh, it ensured the rigor necessary to uh, select uh, uh, nominees who uh, will no doubt add value in Parliament. Uh, the issue of uh, people who are facing allegations, I think the SG will deal with that because the electoral committee's role was uh, to implement the rules and, and those who had criminal records were excluded uh, without any uh, you know uh, prevarication and so so for those who uh, are facing certain allegations there are processes that the ANC had to set in motion. Uh, part of those processes include the uh, fact that they had to appear before the Integrity Commission and, and where the Integrity Commission made certain recommendations to the National Executive Committee. The National Executive Committee was the structure with the authority to then finalize those matters. And uh, to the extent that, uh, uh, as, as the Electoral Committee, we did not uh, have very definitive uh, uh, findings against uh, people who are facing certain allegations, uh, we couldn't, as the Electoral Committee, exclude them from the list here. Thank you. And then, uh, I think it's Raymond, it's a similar question uh, that are the internal processes of the ANC uh, uh, taking precedence over the Zondo Commission? The, the, the answer to that is that uh, no, uh, the, the Zondo Commission reports in, in, in certain instances recommend further investigations of uh, certain uh, individual started lists. It did not itself make any definitive findings against uh, some of the people. And so the internal processes of the ANC uh, are really to refer such uh, cases. Uh, uh, for the mere fact that you are mentioned to the Integrity Commission. And if you uh, explain to the Integrity Commission as to why you are mentioned in the report, the Integrity Commission then makes a recommendation to the National Executive Committee, the, which uh, the, uh, is, is then considered by the National Executive Committee. But there's no, uh, uh, you know, undermining of uh, the work that the Zondo Commission did. Uh, it's, 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 it's processing it to some uh, finality, uh, uh, as it were, because some of it, uh, the NPA still has to act on it, and, and, and the hawks, and so on. And so the ANC has to... Uh, uh, also use its internal processes, not uh, by, by so doing, uh, not really throwing the Zondo Commission reports into the waste bin. Uh, it exists, 
and, and, and the processes flowing out of it will be followed to the letter. And, and the internal processes of the ANC uh, also are meant to help the organization to uh, adopt a, a, a stance that uh, is informed and not just uh, on, on the basis of uh, 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 the what exists in the grain, you know, uh, and, and is communicated through the uh, social media and, and, and so on. So the ANC has to follow its own processes as well. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Max. Thank you very much um, for the questions. Uh, News 24. Uh, the, the, the people who are affected in terms of the report, um, that's the, the first uh, question. We will answer that. Is the ANC held at ransom uh, by ANC members? The ANC is not held at ransom by its members. Uh, the ANC is following the due processes uh, that affect each and in every individual who themselves have got rights. So there's nothing that is fudged or put under the carpet and not been addressed by the National Executive Committee. Uh, I've given you a full account that uh, we've had 20 people uh, for who appeared on the Zondo Commission from NEC members who retired and those, some of them who are serving. Of that 20, we had six. Of these six, only appear on the ANC 2024 candidate list. And then each one of them have actually been attended to. So um, there's no member of the ANC who's holding the organization uh, at ransom. I think the, there could have been a misinterpretation. It's very difficult to interpret the neck to English. So sometimes the interpretation of what I said in English becomes something else. So it's called a story from funding. So yeah, can you hear me? The Lord of Mercy began a call. So nobody is left off the hook uh, in terms of these matters. Uh, of course, we are concerned about the IEC leakage, but we are confident that uh, the IEC body is very much uh, capable uh, to deal with any uh, anarchy that may arise, like the leakage of the NC list uh, and so on, we've got full confidence in the Independent Electoral Commission because how you run, you first admit, because people were asking where, who leaked the information, IEC then confirmed that it came from IEC because that list was guarded and uh, up until we send it to IEC a few, an hour after we submitted, right on time, uh, it was leaked. And also with some other party that we are challenging in court uh, next week. Um, uh, their list was also leaked, but you could see it's a family affair versus the, the movement uh, of the people like we actually explained in terms of the list. And uh, we will give you the ANC list today. We will release it to all platforms uh, for you to see it from the provinces, province to province, province to national, and as well as uh, the national list that we submitted. So uh, the, the question of the threats, uh, we expect that uh, the state and the rule of law uh, must be maintained. Now that the date of the elections has been announced and we are in the full election mode, individuals and their political parties must be held accountable. Uh, you know the code of conduct. 
what it means. Some other people have been a problem here in the ANC and they've left with their anarchy and they are showing it somewhere, that anarchy. Promoting lawlessness, anarchy, no sense of governability and all of that. Uh, the law must take its course and the IEC must act. Uh, no one has got the right to threaten democracy in our country. If you've got problems and challenges, argue those like we are doing. We have taken MK Party, which is our, our, our trademark. We have taken it to court. That's the basis. We've got no problem with Jacob Zuma forming a political party, even if he can name it after himself. We don't have a problem about that. But the fact that you take the trademark of the ANC, we will challenge that. The same as when COPE was formed, we lost the case in court because we believed that the Congress of the People was the brainchild of the African National Congress. But we lost in court because we could not provide to court that COPE was the trademark of the African National Congress. And we lost in that, uh, in that way. So, Mkonto Esizwe is known trademark of the ANC and we are challenging that in court and nobody is going to threaten us uh, uh, from not doing that. Uh, in April last year, we, we won the case through the IEC uh, against the Umkondo Esizwe to be registered as a political party. It resurfaced and the claim is that uh, we did not oppose the Gazette. But uh, those things are tested in court. So there are two levels in terms of Mkonto Esizwe party. We are challenging them for deregistration and we are also taking them on in relation to our trademark. So the first case will be next week Tuesday in Bloemfontein and then uh, the second one uh, it has been agreed will be around 27th uh, of March in terms of the trademark. So that's what uh, is, going to, is going to happen. Uh, News 24. Let's disabuse ourselves about this notion that we did nothing. Uh, we are doing nothing about Zondo. Uh, the ANC was the... We signed and supported uh, the Zondo Commission. We supported the Zondo Commission. Uh, we supported that uh, our members who are implicated in their own individual right must appear before the Zondo Commission. And um, Zondo has made specific recommendations about individuals that they must be investigated. If people are arrested, the ANC will act on that like we have done. Mkulua, uh, Comrade Khalima, I have just addressed you on the issue that in our list, we had people who were on the step aside, they were not allowed on the list. We had people who had a criminal record and then uh, were taken off the list. That's what has happened. Nobody who's on a step aside who's on the ANC list. The comrades who appeared in Zondo and uh, there are adverse findings by the Integrity Commission, the rule says, and we're not hiding technically behind rules. Let's explain to you. The rule says no one will be eligible to stand if they've gone to the Integrity Commission, they've got adverse findings, and those findings are confirmed by the National Executive Committee. So in relation to these members of the ANC who are in the list, their cases have not been confirmed by the National Executive Committee, and the National Executive Committee uh, is due to process a host of uh, cases who, which come from the Integrity Commission that affect individuals. And that is why in our statement we say they will be reassessed if you are in the list and the NEC then endorse the findings of the Integrity Commission. You are standing as a public representative if you are elected, you will be reassessed. That's what we are explaining. So we allow the due process to follow and that's it. Now, if you decide individually that uh, you stand 
uh, you step aside on your own. It's an individual uh, case that you take. Maybe you're guided by your conscience. You decide, I don't want to go through this route. Let me step aside. But there is no basis to remove anybody in terms of the list in as far as the rules of the ANC are concerned. So that is, that is the point that we need to clarify uh, to everybody so that you understand. There's no list that is littered with people uh, who've got adverse findings and a decision has been taken and the NEC has decided to ignore that. No. With some of the people who are also in the list, there are current developments uh, in terms of their status. Some are affected by ethics issues in Parliament and they've been exonerated. And some have not been exonerated. So uh, these are the matters uh, we are dealing with uh, in the organization. Our list process has been very, very transparent and rigorous. It's not a boardroom list. We understand some political parties is very easy. You sit in a house, draft a list with your family, and then uh, you have a national list for the elections. Others sit in a boardroom, a political party, they decide. Ours is very tough. We're contesting everywhere in this country. And then that's why we address issues of uh, demographics, traditional leadership, people with disability. The national question uh, in our list must be reflected. And then uh, that's what we've done. Our list has got 53% women and has got 40% uh, young people. And some of them are here. Uh, let me see the list. Uh, uh, let me just uh, show you, and then they will just stand up so that you see them. I don't have their curriculum vitae, but uh, I think they've gone to school. They are well educated. Uh, so uh, we've got Fasia, stand up. Uh, Hassan, uh, she's in our candidate list, uh, national to national. Comrade uh, Steve Litzike. Uh, is also on our list, Comrade uh, Zugoko Limpi, uh, Comrade uh, Megan uh, Chauke Adoris uh, is here also on our list, uh, Comrade uh, Andres Nell uh, is also here, our own Mlungu. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, uh, but it's not only him. Uh, just giving you the taste of what is in our list. Uh, our list is very diverse uh, in terms of what we have presented uh, to South Africans. So uh, we know issues of integrity cannot be taken mildly and we don't take your questions to us about people who are affected by integrity issues as a menace and an irritation. It is important because we are a party that has fully committed itself to integrity issues. So when you as the media, I'm not patronizing you, ask the question, you are holding us accountable against what we have committed ourselves to. That's correct. So don't think you are irritating us, waking me at night and all of that and so on. It's proper. SG, why is Soros so on the list? Because... From our information, we have learned this and that about him or her. It's important because that's, we, we, we said we want to be held accountable with high standards. And that's what the ANC said. It's not me, it's the ANC conference. And that's what we're implementing. And I'm explaining to you that we met even late at night to discuss matters of integrity. Of course, there are distortions there and there that we need to correct. President did not run away. He recused himself. Paul Mashatile, our deputy president, was chairing the meeting. All right? President Tabombeki was there. Did he speak? Yes, very good. He didn't endorse wrongdoing. He simply explained that it is important that these issues are processed.
So I saw a report that said Mbegi endorses wrongdoers in the ANC. That's not correct. I know you get information from people who are leaking. People generally who've got no love for their organization, the ANC, who just leak, 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 leak information unprovoked. Why? We don't know why people will do that. Even when they leak, they distort the truth. Mbegi was the last to speak in that meeting, and he was firm, as always, on matters of integrity. When I met with the Electoral Commission, they were firm also. And then they said, I gave them the report of the Integrity Commission. And then they came back to me. I said, who of these people I've given you appear on our list? They gave back the report. These are the following. Issues that we did not even discuss is the issue of people who are on step aside. They were taken off our list. So that's what we've done. So if Jacob Zuma was, for instance, in the ANC list, we would have taken him out, uh, you know, without. I'm just giving an example. Uh, because he's on a step aside. Uh, and he would have been on a step aside of the ANC. So it was a tough one. From the president to the last person, all people went through interviews. President sit, sat there with the electoral committee for two hours on the interviews. This job is not complete. Now, Mkulua, we are supposed to do, we are going to employ what we call um, uh, on our public representatives, they must do uh, lifestyle audits. That's the job we are going to now. And then process even the matters of the Integrity Commission, not only for these ones who appear now, but generally, generally, those outstanding matters must be processed. Again, I saw a report that says the ANC NEC defies integrity commission. It's not true. We didn't defy. If we defied, it would have never been a subject matter. We know, of course, people wanted us to take a decision there and there that these people don't qualify. But we can't do that without following the rules because litigation will work against us. People go to court and challenge us, even on any other matter, that no, you have, you have, you have, you've got rules, but you don't respect those rules. And courts have not been kind to the ANC, where we have uh, even found one thing on our constitution and the rules we have set for ourselves. They've ruled against us. So we've got... Uh, we've got experience from the courts that we've got to respect our rules and our decisions. So that's what uh, we've done. So nobody has got a, a power to defy the Integrity Commission. The, the, the backlog on the Integrity Commission report is that not this Integrity Commission chaired by Frank Chikan, is because these reports were there in the organization and they were not processed. Isma Khashule just sat on reports. Look at you in the face, hmm? report? No. <laughs> so that's why we've got a backlog. He didn't. I'm not doing that. You appear before the Integrity Commission, the NEC, I put it there, must decide. There are about five people now who are not even in the list who have appeared before the Integrity Commission and there is a finding on them. So the NEC must process that. So that's what... Um, uh, the National Executive Committee uh, needs to do. So, thank you very much, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And goes. Thank you very much, uh, colleagues. I hope that the questions have been uh, responded to comprehensively. Do I hear a yay? Okay, at this point, I'd like to thank everyone, and the presser is adjourned. Long live Matendi. Long live, long live, long live. Long live, Matendi.